a dozen total solar eclipses in the United States during the 20th century. Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Spare Leak Project, how the heck are you? Not only am I going to share with you the different paths that the solar eclipses have gone along in the United States over the past 100 years, but also what are we looking at the next seven years from now in the United States? It's incredible, actually. It's going to be X marks the spot, a small town in Illinois that used to use the Egyptian star as their trademark. Quite fascinating indeed. Also, I'm going to share with you footage from a very expensive camera setup, multiple thousands of dollars. I mean, these guys are using 4K equipment, the stuff that documentary and film crews use that you see on the big screen. Well, this footage is awesome. I'm going to share it with you, and I'd like to get your take on the solar eclipse. First of all, if the solar eclipse that we just saw if the sun wasn't blocked from the moon based upon the math that we've been using for a very long time, then what was it? What caused the total solar eclipse? Let me share this with you guys now. What you're looking at right here is National Eclipse Block, Living in the Future. It's a great article, actually, nationaleclipse.wordpress.com. This shows the eclipse path from 1918, June 8th. You can see it's similar to the one that we just had. Now, the media does a really good job, alternative and mainstream, of putting together catchy titles to get people to watch the news or to watch the um, article in play. So, this one right here, the paths of the next and last coast-to-coast -coast total solar eclipse in the U.S., you'll see August 21st, we just had it, and June 8th, 1918. Here's an article that came out Topeka State, next total eclipse, 2017. So obviously they've known about this stuff for quite some time. Another thing I want to share with you, let me change the screen up a little bit here. Scroll down. This is from the Alliance Herald, June 13th, 1918. Don't ever use homemade items such as smoked glass to view an eclipse. Well, thank you for that advice. Don't use smoked glass. What about the lady that used a styrofoam plate? Viewed by thousands. Then the Holt County Sentinel, June 14, 1918. The Arizona Republican. Look at this. The Arizona Republican printed a nice map of the 1918 path of totality. May 30th, 1918. Also mentioned by the Sun are the upcoming 1923, 1925, 1970, and 79 eclipses in the U.S. So, debunking the national eclipse. Let's scroll down here a little bit. Look at this. Will you just look at it? There were 12 total solar eclipses in the U.S. during the 20th century. And you can see all of the paths right here. They did a great job putting this together for us. But you'll also notice that a lot of these... You've got to, there's not nearly the amount of people that have an opportunity to see it like they did in 1918 within the 48 states there. So when you read this article here, the national eclipse will be the first total solar eclipse exclusive to the U.S. since 1776. So splitting hairs with this one because this statement is essentially correct but the way it's often worded can be misleading. Now, there's different locations to get the best opportunity to view the eclipse, the total solar eclipse, etc. Why did the natives, you know, like the Navajo, feel that if you were a part of the eclipse, it was something that was going to cause health problems down the road? I don't know. What did they know, or what did they feel? Why did they feel that way? I've, I've asked a couple people that are natives, and I wasn't able to get a very detailed answer. So I'd really like to know about that. But there's something else I wanted to share with you guys as well. Still scrolling, still scrolling. Where is it at? Here we go. Right here. So in 2024, you see that X marks the spot, the eclipse we had just recently. And then this one in 2024. Well, where is that? That's by a place called... Cedar Lake, 
Now, this is Illinois, but look at that town just on the path called Macanda. What is Macanda? Macanda, Illinois. It's just a tiny little village, Jackson County. And in the early 20th century, it used the slogan, Star of Egypt. The Star of Egypt, also a part of the X marks the spot. I thought that was pretty interesting, to say the least. So what is the Star of Egypt? Well, you can read about Egyptian astronomy as well. I wanted to share this with you guys. The, the sun and the moon appear the same size in Earth's sky because the sun diameter is about 400 times greater, but the sun is also about 400 times farther away. I think that makes a, a pretty good case there for the Earth as a globe. Now, you guys definitely need to watch the sign. Go to Audience Network. Watch the sign. Watch the trailer. I'll leave the link in the video description box. This is the documentary crew that I met up with out at Smith's Ferry, Idaho. These guys are first class, and the footage that I'm going to share with you is from these guys. The footage that I'm going to share with you is top-notch, by the way. I mean, this is stellar. Here we go. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Put your hands and seat inside of the ride at all times. Just joking. You don't even need to wear your seatbelt on this one. Here we go. Boom. It's starting. The equipment they used, 4K, the best of the best. Well, I don't know about the best of the best, but really, really good equipment. Way above anything that I've got. Well, in the video realms. Wait a second. What? There we go. It's about four and a half minutes. And you'll see the eclipse go into totality. You'll see the time stamp down here on the bottom right, time of the day. Let's see how this looks here. It's looking good. We just look at it. Somebody left a comment, said, Rex, why don't you listen to music? I listen to music all the time. I just sometimes don't listen to music when I'm on the road because it allows me to focus more on the road and... I get in a deep thought when I'm driving. What about you guys? You guys ever get in a deep thought when you're just driving for hours and hours and hours in the middle of nowhere? Okay, let's... Here we, whoa, what is that? Hey, will you just look at it? Here we go. It's getting started. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. You can see the focal length. You can see, I remember how cool it got when this happened. And this guy's like, take off your glasses. So I take off my glasses, and that's what I saw. There's so many people out there that say that this is a hoax. It was a sun simulator. It was all just Project Bluebeam. All of these news articles that are uh, you know, from 1918, those aren't even from 1918. Those are recent articles that they just put on the web. So this is all just made up, and space isn't real. Well, what if space is real? What if this is real? I mean, I think it's real, personally. But the Petri dish thing, that could definitely make sense. It doesn't mean space isn't real, though. Space is still there in a Petri dish also, isn't it? It's definitely there in a Petri dish. Space is an illusion. And you can see... It's just, when you're there, you guys, and you, you have an opportunity to experience this, there's not much like it because you can feel the difference. You can see the difference, and the energy levels were great. The people out there had really good vibes. I met some really nice people at this event. Just be prepared for the ride home. Let's see here. I'm going to fast forward it a second right here. And if you look around the edges, notice that there's some almost cratering. You can see it's not quite perfect. This is where it gets neat right here. So 
So that's it, you guys. You can see right there, boom. Do you see any strange anomalies around it? I mean, do you see any other planets? Do you see any spaceships? I don't. I didn't see anything that cool. Could you imagine, though, if like there's this giant spaceship that just pops up to the side of it at about the 11 o'clock position, maybe 12 o'clock position? Starts zapping some lasers or something. And all of a sudden, people start turning into zombies and like the nano gremlins start to rewrite their cerebral cortex. And then people go back home and watch more reality TV. Oh, wait. They're already doing that. Or are they? Right there is where it starts. Boom. 11.25. 11.25 right there. That footage is great. Thanks a lot to Josh, Akshay, Bobby D and crew for sending me this raw footage. Right there. And then also, just to even do more validation here, like these were more images from different equipment. Looks pretty similar, except for they're using the, uh, this guy was using the filter that I took out there for my telescope. He was putting his camera behind it. You'll see here at the eclipse. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. What is your take on this eclipse that's coming up? That's going to be like that X marks the spot. Is there going to be no, just another day in paradise? You know, also I want to bring up that some people have said, Hey, Rex, are you going to tell, are you going to do another video saying, Hey, you know, nothing happened. You know, zombies aren't walking around yet because I brought up the the NASA's doing or N NASA launched those balloons into the stratosphere with that bacteria that's highly resilient to extreme temperatures and environmental conditions. Well, there's also a lot of pre-programming and con uh, psychological conditioning that not only Metallica was a part of where they had the, the white balloon being launched into the atmosphere, then pandemics soon occurred after that, the strain. Also, some other media outlets have portrayed certain events and pandemics being started from balloons. So it was just interesting that NASA was doing the white balloon launch. And I think it's quite silly that they need to put something like that into the stratosphere and say that's, that's the only way they can test these conditions. Because what if that bacteria does tweak a little bit? It's freeze-dried, it's launched into the atmosphere, it tweaks a little bit, it comes back, and what if it causes some type of pandemic that they weren't prepared for? There's been a lot of people that said they got sick right after the eclipse in the comment section that I've been reading through. Now, there's multiple variables that could cause that, but I do find it interesting, and a lot of people expect there to be instant gratification, something that's just immediately going to happen the second after a certain date or time based on astrological signs, the signs in the heavens. And oftentimes it might be a week later, it might be a month later, it might be a year later linked to certain events. So thank goodness we're still here. Thank goodness World War III hasn't been launched yet. Is there something wrong with questioning what's going on and being prepared for the worst, expecting the best, hoping for the best? I, I certainly don't think so. What do you guys think? Question everything, be excellent to each other, and be the change you want to see.